it seemed I couldn't put a foot wrong, because just when I was screwing up the nerve to ask mother if I could borrow the Cortina again, Mick told me he'd found a car right up my street. It was a Vauxhall Viscount, with electric windows, leather upholstery and a 3.3 litre engine. It wasn't brand new, but it had been well cared for. It was the first time I'd been to Middlesbrough since I'd been at the Crown Court for my last sentence. When I saw the skyline of the place from the A19, it filled me with the same sense of dread. There was a solitary black cloud hanging over the city, with every industrial waste disposal unit belching clouds of smoke, making it bigger and more depressing by the hour. What a fucking dump, I thought, driving past the transporter bridge. Rows of derelict houses and tatty patches of waste ground, looking for the gym where John Spensley trained his lads. At the end of the week, I thought it had been one of the most pleasant times of my life, and John, one of the best fellas I knew. He was the president of the recently formed Northern Area Council of the BBBC, which had been specially brought in to make John part of the firm. He was an old pro himself, and knew all about the close shop mentality, and it bothered him not. All he wanted to do was give the lads in the North East a chance to box locally and a fair crack of the profits. The other mob had no interest in this part of the country, but they'd supply opponents, referees, timekeepers, buckets and mops, and let John get on with it. He was only in the game because he loved it, and making money was the last of his motives.